Look, uh, I want to start by making some points about the psychology of the ruling elite on this issue of water charges, but also more broadly uh, in terms of broader political uh, uh, questions. Again and again, Minister, the ruling elite that you are part of underestimate the anger of the people, the anger of the people without interruption, and the mood for change. And the Brexit referendum has actually been a case in point in that regard. Most common question around this place in the last week has been, what way do you think it is going to go? And any conversation I had with a supporter of your government, the answer was close, very close, but I think it will be a narrow vote to remain. You all thought that it would be remain, and you were all wrong. I was on a media programme with one of your colleagues at the weekend, uh, and uh, your colleague, a minister just back from the UK, said that uh, from what he had heard, talking to people over there, that he thought that it would be a narrow vote for Remain. And, uh, uh, sorry, I understand that we are dealing with the Water Service Amendment Bill. I will, I, will, I, will quickly, I will quickly demonstrate, Cahir, like the relevant. Okay. But, but I, I thought to my. On, on the point of order, uh, Deputy O'Sullivan referred briefly. to Brexit in her yeah, speech, and you didn't. I didn't allow her to expand it briefly. If you're moving on to this, that's I thought fine. to myself, but what people exactly were you speaking to? Did you go down the bookies and spend a bit of time uh, with men who can't find steady work and hang out at the betting shop to find a, a, a bit of a company and to take their minds off the reality of life? Or did the minister go down to the shopping centre and talk to the single mother who's trying to rear kids in a tough estate on the basis of her earnings from a part-time job? Or did the minister talk to people like himself, to journalists, to politicians, to civil servants, and to other people who live and move in the same world and the same circles as the minister moved in? Now, this is the connection with water charges. The Minister and his government also underestimate the anger of the people and the mood for change here too in this country. And nowhere is that mood shown more clearly, Cahirlock, than on, the, on this issue of the water charges. You see, people have spoken clearly on this issue already. More than a million households, Minister, have boycotted in full or in part your water charges. Hundreds of thousands have marched against your water charges. And yet, what do we hear from the government benches? First of all, it was, we're not getting our message across properly. How patronising is that? The message is fine, but the people, we're just not getting it across to them properly. Then it was, we'll reduce the prices and the people will pay. And when people dug in for a long battle of non-payment, then it was, the numbers on the demonstrations are going down somewhat, so it'll be okay. And you were blindsided. You were blindsided completely yourselves when this issue emerged to punch you on the nose and the government on the nose in the general election campaign. And now, Cahirlock, despite um, the parties in the last government, uh, one of which is in this government, having been severely <coughs> wounded, in the campaign, despite uh, them losing half their deputies between Fine Gael and Labour, they still don't get it. And they still just can't let go of their water charges. So, Minister, let me spell it out for you. You want to set up a committee. It doesn't matter if you set up ten committees. You want to bring in dozens of experts. It doesn't matter if you bring in hundreds of experts. You have lost. You have lost. And as far as the majority of people are concerned, the charges are gone. Working class people are not going to pay. It is as simple as that. And if you and the government are so arrogant that you are not prepared to learn that lesson today, well then I'm afraid that you will be forced to learn it at twice the cost to your government tomorrow. We should be debating today abolition of the water charges rather than suspension. But if the majority in this House 
Fine Gael, with their new allies in Fianna Fáil, are going to suspend, we'll make sure, or we will fight to stitch into that, a series of amendments on the need to suspend water metering, on the need to write off arrears, and so on down the road. And my colleague, Deputy Paul Murphy, will be going into that in a, a greater a, a, a detail. With the remainder of my time, I want to deal with some of the argumentation around the issue of water conservation. Cahirlock, 41% of treated water in this state is unaccounted for. Are the, the losses coming from housing units, from households? No. In the main, no. And that, that is from Irish Water's own st stats. Irish Water announced recently that based on the metres already installed, they can extrapolate that for their estimated 1.5 million customers, the leak rate is 45 million litres per day, or 30 litres per property per day. That is under 3% of the total water produced. 3% when 41% is unaccounted for. In other words, for every 14 litres lost, Minister, less than one litre leaks from a housing unit. It's the general system of pipes that the focus has to be on. For example, we live in Cork City. You're familiar with the big leak in the fever hospital steps on the north side a couple of years ago. When were those pipes installed? Was it in the day of Bertie Ahern or Jack Lynch or Gareth Fitzgerald? No. It was under the rule of Eamon de Valera. Where I live in Cork City, in Blackpool, a lot of the pipes underneath the ground were installed when the British were ruling the country. That's where the investment needs to go, and it can be fixed. In the Dublin region, which for the purpose of this survey included Kildare and Meath, in 1996 there was 42.5% uh, rate unaccounted for water. But yet, after a Dublin regional conservation plan of state investment, that was reduced by a third to 28%. In the South Dublin County Council area, with district metering and with a leak det detection crew, that was reduced to uh, 16%. So in conclusion, Cahirlach, we need a programme of state investment. Investment in fixing those pipes and all public buildings and new developers, uh, developments, with developers paying the price, Rainwater harvesting to be installed, dual flush toilets to be installed, recycling of grey water, etc. Your figure, Minister, of 600 million investment a year is a very conservative figure. It needs to be a billion euro a year, not from water charges, from a progressive taxation system which makes the super wealthy pay their taxes. Thank you, Deputy. And I